Ecco qua. Buen día.
Hola, buen día. Una porción de esta carne de acá, frente. Bueno, ¿ah? Una porción. ¿Sí? ¿Ahí? Hoy. Oh, no, perdón. La porción entera. ¿Entera? Entera, Ay, sí, sí. ¿Y dónde puedo comprar para hacer asado? Um, jabón y todo eso. Porque tengo la parilla, no tengo nada más. ¿Carbón? Carbón. Sí, Japón, sí. cama. Perfecto. Una lechuga. No me como. Sí, yo va para allá y la paga allá. Gracias. No, porque está. Está pendiente de la. Ya, le voy a ayudar a la tuya, ¿no? Ya, listo, está. 2500. 20, 2500 nomás. Ahí, ahí estamos. Estamos con esto. Ya, gracias. Eso ya no es ahí, ¿qué más? 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 ¿Qué Sí, 960, sí. ¿Lo noto? No. No, ya. El tomate, un tomate de la chuca. Hay que pesarlo el tomate. Tomate y pesar. Sí, sí, con mil de chuco. Es la 50 la unidad. ¿Y esto qué es? Ya, 140. ¿Eso no va? 2010. Para todos, 140. Sí. 200. No, 140. Al revés. 300. Gracias. Gracias. Ahí está. Ahí está. Ahí está. Ahí está. Ahí está. Ahí está.
Oh, hola. 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 ¿Cuándo me sale un uh, paquete de arándanos? Dos mil. Eh, dos mil. Uno, por favor. Gracias.
so great that it collapses of itself and then causes a big bang, creating a new universe from the mass that's been pulled into it. Is that uh, Again, I'm not going to let you know the secret. Anyway, don't tell everybody. Oh, wait, but, but when they talk about black holes, they talk about the black hole as it evolves from a star shrinking down. Did you do atoms at school? Oh, I did, yes. Yeah, okay. So you know that an atom is firstly mostly in the space. Yeah. The simple core compared to the electron shell is like a football in Wembley Stadium. Four months ago, you know. And that there's huge distances between the atoms. So as a star collapses, well, why does it collapse? Well, in a star you've got two forces. You've got the outward force due to the nuclear fires providing pressure. And the inward force of gravity, as we know gravity sucks. Suppose you switch off the nuclear fire. Well then, gravity's got nothing to resist it. So then you go first to the stage where it's packed very densely, and the atoms are a lot more densely packed than normal, but they're still not actually touching each other. They're still atoms just a lot, lot closer to each other. And that's a white dwarf where you've got something the mass of our sun, but say the size of the Earth. Then compress it a bit more, start off with something a bit heavier and a bit more massive, and then you'll end up with a stage where the atoms themselves push up against each other and into each other. And as you know, an atom has got electrons in the cloud on the outside, and then on the inside you've got the protons and the neutrons. Well, the whole mass the whole thing together. Just shove those electrons into the nucleus. You know, enormous forces needed. Well, the neutron stays a neutron, but the proton, which is positive, it sucks up an electron, which is negative, and they form a neutron. And then all you've got is just a ball of neutrons uh, on top of balls of neutrons. Just balls and balls and balls of neutrons. That's the neutron star. Once again, roughly the mass of the sun, but maybe 10, 20 kilometers in diameter. But then let's take it further, where the neutrons themselves get squashed into God knows whatever the neutrons are made of. Wow. Went out and here's a big secret, and you then form what's called a singularity. And, and Stephen Hawking uses this term, but what he doesn't tell people is a singularity is a physics term, and we don't know what happens. The laws of physics are gone crazy. Anything happens. Pick anything you like. We don't know. We've got no idea. So when they say, oh, in the inside of the black hole is a singularity, what that means is we've got no idea what's going on down there. And so, yes, there is something going on down there, and could it be leading into a wormhole? Yes. Could it eventually form another Big Bang somewhere else? Yes. Have we got any proof of it? No. We don't know. Just, just start your own theories and write your own bets. You can do anything you like. Nobody knows. So is it possible? Yes. Have we got any proof of it? No. No, no, no clue. Nice idea. Do that page to do it. Get right ahead. The 
this question before we go to the news. This is from Richard from Cambridge. He says, if you shoot a bullet into the sky, how far up will it go? And he says he assumes it will kill if it lands on you. It will. Um, the velocity needed for a bullet to crack a skull is 200 kilometres per hour. And in Kuwait, after the first Gulf War, uh, a dozen or more people, after the big celebrations when they fired bullets into the air after Kuwait was liberated in the first Gulf War in 2003, was it? Or was it 1995? I forget one of those. Um, no, no, what? Anyway, in the first Gulf War, um, many people died from random bullets falling out of the sky. So what happens is, once again, you get the two forces. So it's going to to the bottom of the hour. So you have the upward force provided by the expanding gases. And depending on what sort of firearm you have, the bullet is leaving subsonic or supersonic or high supersonic. And it will go into the air half a kilometre, one kilometre, two kilometres, until gradually it gets to the point when finally the upward force is spent and the force of gravity equals the upward force and then just comes to a halt. Quivers in the air for a zillionth of a second and starts to fall. Once again, you two forces up and not the force you get the downward force due to gravity, and you get the resistance force due to the wind. wind so it won't go as fast. It won't get up to supersonic. It will go fast to 200 kilometers per hour, up to 100, 400, and a ton of it go fast, but the bullet can definitely kill on the way down. And in Los Angeles, many people every year get taken to the King something hospital with uh, wounds or sometimes death from random falling, falling bullets from the sky. Well, please, uh, no one try and shoot a bullet into the sky. We don't want that. Um, and we have Robert from Brighton on the phone. Robert, hello. Oh, good evening. How are you? Dr. Robert. I'm very well, and both of you two doctors. Um, well, I have a question, which is to do with art. And everyday usage, as everybody has a, a camera in their phone. What my question is, I fully understand from the history of photography how you can capture an image onto paper, glass and a roll of film. But how, how is it that the, an image is captured onto a digital memory card? How does that... Ah. You see, now, after yeah. you've got a roll of film, now, I can understand you take it out the camera, you whiz off to the darkroom, you've got alchemy, and you have a perfect portrait. But how, would, how, does, how did the transition happen? Ah, well, it goes back to that glorious year, 1969, in which we had the first flight of the Jumbo 747 and the Concorde supersonic flight, and we landed on the moon and we invented the charge coupled display, CCD. Based on an earlier device called a bucket brigade. Now think of a bucket brigade where you've got a fire over there and over here you've got a river and you've got a whole bunch of buckets and a bunch of people. 